together on the third verse. What have I to try? What have I to fear? Leaning on the everlasting arms. My hands are so peace with my heart. Leaning on the everlasting arms. Leaning, leaning. Strength and support from all alarms. Leaning, leaning. Amen, amen. Another great hymn. That's my favorite hymn right now because I just sang it. Amen. And do we need to do that for sure? Leaning on the everlasting arms. Don't lean on your own strength or your own will for sure. That'll lead you in the wrong direction. Lean on Jesus. Amen. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we do thank you for this morning. Always, always, always a sweet time. We thank you for morning service. And Lord, we come hungry. We come hungry teachable. We pray that we would, in fact, be teachable. We pray that you would have complete opportunity to have your way with us, Lord, already praying ahead of time for that in everything that takes place, even already uh, during the opening hymn and meet and greet and everything that takes place. It's all to worship you. It's all to magnify you and glorify you. And so, Lord, we love you and we praise you, Lord. And yes, Lord, we also want to pray on purpose right now for anybody who might be here who cannot say that they know for sure that if they die today, they're going to heaven. We want not one to leave this place lost. Friend, trust Jesus today. That's the most important decision that you'll ever make. We love you and we praise you and we pray all of this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Let's be seated. Those are stuff, don't I? I got all those neat things to do. I'm, uh, I took a little bit of uh, Pastor Ashley's uh, morning prayer thing there because he's going to be your preacher next week and the, and the week after that. So I'll tell you what, you want to be here for sure. You know what's exciting? It, whenever the pastor's away, when we hear about uh, everybody being here in their place and uh, even bringing friends, it, it, it doesn't hurt my feelings. It makes me very, very, very happy. And I want you to be an encouragement to Pastor Ashley, what a blessing he is, and uh, so thankful for uh, the men in our church, and also for Brother Jaime, who will be preaching on Wednesday night. You know, I get a little jealous of him, I just got to admit, okay? You know what happens, uh, on live stream, he gets more views than anybody. People just, I think they, they just love him, okay? And so thankful for him, thankful for all of our guys, uh, Brother Ellis and other guys that fill in, Brother Jeff. Uh, we're, we're, we're blessed. Are we blessed here at Miramatha? We sure are. Amen. And so be praying for us as we'll be making our way to the Philippines. As I mentioned in Sunday school, pray for uh, just open hearts, for fruit that remains. Uh, what a joy and a privilege it is. So we've got some really good friends there, and we're looking forward to hopefully being a blessing and a help. Amen? Uh, just uh, quickly, uh, here's the big one right here. Church family picture. How many have got their pretty face on this morning? Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Okay, Anel, you're going to have a lot of work to do. She'll fix it. She'll fix it, okay? Anybody need to lose 20 pounds? Anybody? You? At least somebody raised their <laughs> I'm not going to say anybody, but his initials are Jeff. He raised his hand. Amen. (laughs) Boy, this is going to be one well-done picture. Amen. Amen. And by the way, we're going to do something kind of special. So listen to direction. How do we want to do this, by the way? Just to say. You want everybody just to hang around after church, right? Okay, don't leave. Don't forget and start walking out to your car. I'll... I'll, somebody will attack you, okay? Who's our, who's our security guy today? Brother Henry? Oh, you better watch out. You better be ready. So don't leave. Big time pictures. And Matt's going to have you all set up and ready to go, okay? That's going to be after uh, the uh, morning service. And then notice, daylight saving time. Is this the one where you end up showing up late or early? Begin next Sunday, March 8th. Make sure that you set your clocks ahead early Saturday evening. By the way, our cell phones, thankfully. Aren't you glad for cell phones? 
They do all that themselves. Um, and get to bed and be ready to, for church. I love this. I love when people think that they're coming to Sunday school and they find themselves coming to Sunday morning or they end up coming at the end of the morning service. You know, it's kind of embarrassing, but uh, set your clocks for sure. Amen. Any other announcements? Anybody? And visitors. Do we have any visitors? I'll tell you what, this guy is becoming more and more helpful. Yes, Janie. Amen. So good to have you. So good to have you, Norma. All right. Please turn now in your hymnals, hymn number 195. 195. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me more than him? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow.
Please stand now for the offering and turn to hymn number 345. 345. Blessed assurance. We 
sing to our souls. We won't bury our hope where He leads us to go. There's a rusty road when we can't see the now with him 579. 579. actually making sure the phone is turned off. How about, did we all make sure our phones were turned off? That's good. If your phone isn't turned off, you should get a ringtone that sounds like this. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> that would work pretty good. I would invite you to turn in your Bibles this morning to Psalm 122. Psalm 122. Anybody remember way back in the morning Sunday school hour what psalm we were in? Psalm 1. That's right. So we're, we're, we went from Psalm 1, now we're in Psalm 122. While you're turning there, let me just throw out the title. I just think it's so great. Are you ready? Why People Do Go to Church. You're thinking, well, wait a minute, I'm here. 
Why do I need to know? <laughs> You'll see in just a moment. But you want to come back tonight. Are you ready? You want to come back tonight because are you ready for the title for tonight? The title for tonight is Why People Do Not Go to Church. <laughs> it really is. It really is. And so we're going to be talking about you if you're not here. <laughs> Psalm 122. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'll tell you what, that's good right there. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is builded as a city that is in compact together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment and thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. By the way, I, I quote this verse often. Right there, that's a promise for you and I. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen? Amen. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and my companions' sake, I will now say, peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek thy good. Father, even now, this morning, Lord, help us, Lord, help us to take a good hard look at really what church is, why church is, and what it's supposed to mean to each and every one of us. The title itself causes us to already answer the question that is asked. And I would even say in a group this size, there is going to be here many who have varying reasons for being here. We want to examine those reasons and also look carefully at what the reasons ought to be. We sure want to do church right because doing church right means we're doing, well, what we're supposed to do as far as honoring and glorifying you, growing in you and understanding that this is your desire, your design. Let us see in a real great way what that means. And yes, Lord, it really is true. There can be one here who doesn't know you as their Savior. Yes, today would be the best day. Right now would be the best time to say yes to Jesus Christ. Ask him into your heart to be your Savior, friend. Don't leave this place. Don't walk away lost. Get saved today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And here's that great verse. I got to tell you, I, get, I just kind of get goosebumps all over just reading it. Psalm 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Why do people go to church? I mean, I'm thankful for church. Amen. I'm especially thankful for Sunday morning. We mentioned in the Sunday school class that There'll be more, there'll, there will be more here for Sunday school or rather Sunday morning than any other service. And that's just the case everywhere. It is. There will be more here than there are in the Sunday school hour and at Sunday night, on Sunday night. And if there's a midweek service, we have a midweek service. Of course, we have a lot of people doing a whole lot of different things on midweek also. But the question needs to be asked, why? Why do, we, why, do we, why do we even do this? Why do we attend church? You know, with all the technology that we have, all the, you know, everybody's got various sources of media, tablets, and everything in the world. You can listen to anybody and everybody you want. What's the big deal? Well, let's break it down a little bit. So let me ask you again. Why, why do people attend church on Sunday morning? Not because of coercion. Now, maybe if you're a little one, 
uh, you know what it means to be on drugs. You've been drugged to church on Sunday morning. You've been drugged to church on Sunday night. You've been drugged to church on Wednesday night. And may I say, good for you. That's the thing to do. But you know, we live in a free country. Attendance is optional. You don't have to go to church. It's not for amusement. Listen, the world has got us beat when it comes to amusement. Now, I know some people think if we look more and more like the world, we're going to draw a crowd. Well, the real truth is you can do the very best that you can, but we're not trained entertainers. We'll never do what the world can do. If that were the case, we would be, you know, Disney pictures or something like that. I'm here to tell you there's got to be some other reason. Some who attend church regularly find themselves wondering why some people come to church. I mean, Dr. Leslie Weatherhead, who had once had a distinguished ministry with the great city temple of London, commented, now I am a, I'm at the listening end of services. So a retired preacher. Uh, sometimes I come away feeling frustrated and angry uh, that a vital, glorious, joyous thing like the Christian religion, this is his words, uh, should have been made so dull, so boring, so irreverent, uh, so meaningless. And this was written a long time ago. You know, I, I think we ought to do our very best to do our very best when it comes to church, don't you think? I think that's really true. I mean, it is kind of sad when it doesn't seem like anybody's trying very hard. We're thankful for our musicians who do the very best that they can to do the very best that they can. And we're thankful for those who sing special music and everything that goes into making church special. We want less distractions. Uh, we kind of feel like it shouldn't be 120 degrees in here. How many are saying amen to that? Some of you are thinking, yeah, but wait a minute. It seems like you think it ought to be 40 degrees in here. Amen? That's just to keep you awake. But you know, it is kind of tough if you made up your mind, I'm going to be at church, and then it doesn't seem like anybody's that excited. Jesus attended the synagogue regularly. He went to church. When he returned to Nazareth where he was brought up, as a custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. Luke chapter 4, verse 16. He had a habit of going to church. You know, can I just say, if we don't get anything else out of this, thank you for being here. Can I say that for real? I mean, thank you for getting into the habit of going to church. We had a deacon's meeting yesterday and we were praying for our church and praying for each other and praying for you and you better be praying for us. And we were thinking of some who have kind of fallen away. They're not, they're not, not, they're not going somewhere else. And by the way, I'd rather somebody go somewhere else and not go to church. Amen? It breaks my heart to think that somebody has fallen away and somehow you know what they did they got out of the habit of going to church i'll tell you what we got enough bad habits let's have some good habits amen you know what i mean and so we're thinking of some that we want to follow up on and visit we even see them on social media liking everything and i don't want them to start thinking well i'll just attend church from you know my easy chair in my living room and my tablet on my lap. I want them to go to church. How was it for you? You remember when you got saved? Remember how it was when you first started coming? It was a little different because your day, your, your and some of you, were, you know, you grew up in a church-going family, and and it was very similar to what you had always done. Then you got saved. You continued to go to church. Some of us didn't do it that way. We weren't in a church, regular church going family. And all of a sudden we're finding ourselves, wow, oh yeah, uh, you know, I ought to go to church. I ought, to, I ought to just do that. And what at first has to be a, a cognizant decision begins to become what we just know we need to do and we're regularly doing it. As a matter of fact, we get to a place where if we're not in church, we feel a little bit weird. 
you know? I hope that's where we're all at, right? You ever find yourself traveling and think, oh, you know what? Where are we going to stop? Where are we going to go to church, you know? Some people say, hey, guess what? We don't have to go to church. <laughs> we're on the road. Well, the real truth is, make going to church beyond a habit in a way of life. And we'll let the Holy Spirit work out the rest, but let's make sure that's where we're at for sure. And you know what? Guess what? Look, you're here. You see, he had a habit of going to church. That's right. He did not wait to see if it was raining or if he had a headache before he decided whether he would attend. I mean, aren't you glad for the Savior? He certainly didn't agree with everything that the speaker was saying. He was in a synagogue. You know he didn't agree with a lot that was being said. And I got to just tell you, probably way back then, some of the services were boring. Uh, he found his way to God's house, though. He got there. He knew it mattered. He knew it mattered. We are not following the example of our Lord if we do not have just the custom, if you will, the habit now becoming a way of life of regularly going to God's house. And I say that to us just to remind us that this isn't an accident that you're here. Something's happened in your life that has made this important to you. And maybe for some that are here, this is kind of more new to you. And others, this has been your way of life for a, a long, long time. It's the right thing to do. It really is. May I just say, my, my, my fear and my worry as a pastor is more and more people are seeing church as less and less important. They'll even say they're saved. They're on their way to heaven, but they have somehow put church on the back burner. You continue to be a blessing and an encouragement and a testimony. I don't want you to go slapping people around. Well, maybe a little bit. No, just kidding. But you know what? Your best testimony is what the neighbors see when you pull out of the driveway on Sunday morning. They see you fighting. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's your fault we're late again. Hey, can I just say that's actually happened to me? I'll have husband and wife walk in, and one, each one will tell me individually, it's their fault. <laughs> By the way, the answer to that is, you know what the answer is? Some of you know. Take two different cards, amen? There you go. Don't, don't wait on that kid. Take, do whatever you got to do. You be here. Have you ever... Have you ever missed church for a couple of weeks and just felt out of sorts? I, I haven't too much because they kind of expect me to be here. <laughs> you heard about the fellow who who was being told by his mother, you need to get up, you need to go to church. And his response was, Mom, no, 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 they don't like me over there. I don't want to go. I just don't want to stay home. And mom said, what, well, there's two good reasons. Number one, you're 47 years old. And number two, you're the pastor. So go to church. But we should all go to church. Let's get back to believing that this is God's plan. And here's the real truth, and I got to tell you, I think we could really preach a lot about this. Some people are in church through unworthy motives. You know, I'm happy to say this because I can't think of anyone in this gathering that, that fits this, but we should always check ourselves and be careful. Matter of fact, there's probably, you go back to the 40s or 50s and it was more common, it was, it was probably good for business to be in church back then. Remember that? Back, back in the 50s, it was good for business to be in church. Today, it's not good for business. Matter of fact, you might even be boycotted. <laughs> you know, you might be a restaurant like Chick-fil-A who still believes in closing on Sunday. Praise the Lord and hallelujah. Amen? And uh, they, they are shut out of places because they take a Christian stance. Hey, one thing I can guarantee you, you go to work for Chick-fil-A, guess what? You're off on Sunday. Go to church. So, 
there are some that go to church for respectability or status, or they see, you know, they would just want to see what everybody else is wearing, I guess, and, you know, it maybe is uh, just kind of a way to salve their conscience. Uh, uh, they're living like they're crazy lost, even if they've trusted Christ during the week, but they figure, well, I need to get back. I need to, you know, at least show up for church, feel a little bit better. And uh, that's still better than nothing. I'll tell you what, I, I've mentioned this before, but if a, if, if a young man shows up because there's a pretty girl at church, I say, the Holy Spirit still does the work and the gospel will still be preached, Amen. And if he touches that girl, we'll beat the tar... No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Going to the church for the wrong reasons is better than not going to church. As a matter of fact, isn't that the the excuse that people use when they fall out of church? Well, I don't want to be a hypocrite. What do you want to be then? (laughs) I mean, really, think about that. What do you want to be? You want to be sitting in front of that television? I was going to say boob do, but... Nobody knows what that means anymore. Are you going to just veg out now? I mean, think about it. We can justify inactivity. We can justify, you know, losing our way. I'll tell you where I want us to, by the way, I'm going to start preaching here in just a moment. I'll tell you where I want us to go with this. Keep on doing what you're doing and encourage others to do also. You know what's a blessing? We're all about, we want to grow as much as the Lord would have us to grow. But we never want to get so big that we don't, that we're not concerned about somebody that's not here. You know what a blessing it is? I was talking to my deacons about, we have ambassadors right here. And I'm not going to start naming you because I'm going to leave some out. But you guys look for the one that hadn't been here for a while. You have an extra special smile for them a word of encouragement for them. You're happy to see them. They're thinking, wow, they remembered me. They're they're happy to see me. Our deacons are challenged, and they do a wonderful job of following up. and, And people, can I tell you something? It matters. So what this is going to help us to do is to keep on doing what we're doing and then do better. So let's break it down just a little bit. Number one, people go to church to worship God. Newsflash, guess what? That ought to be the case, right? In the heart of each of us is a need for God, for a closer walk and relationship with Him. We're wired, we're designed for worship. We consider the worth, we consider God's attributes, and we we get to do it together. It is the soul capacity to worship God. That's who you are. May I also say that if we're not worshiping God, we have a capacity for worship and it'll be something else. That's another reason why we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Because we're going to worship whatever else is pulling us. God can be worshiped anywhere. You've heard that, right? But I can tell you, he can best be worshipped right here. There's something about congregating together. Someone said, you know, I, I worship God in the out of doors, on the lake, on a, on a golf course. I don't worship God on a golf course. I'm lousy at golf. I get mad when I play golf. The only reason why I like to go play golf is every about five or six years, I go with Pastor Ashley because he always wants to get one of those golf carts. And he can reach down and actually pick up the ball without getting out of the golf cart. (laughs) That's a fun time to me. President Theodore Roosevelt, by the way, President Theodore Roosevelt is, is, is known for all across the nation making national parks designating areas as national parks. So this is a man of the outdoors, amen? President Theodore Roosevelt's answer to this classic, oh, you can buy, uh, you, you can go and just worship God out there in the great outdoors. And by the way, I love the outdoors. 
But here's what, his response was, you can, but you likely won't. That's exactly what he said. Worship involves other people. I'm all for the outdoors and all that that entails, but worship is for other people. It's for us to come together. Where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is here in the midst also. There's something special about coming together. He promises to be in our midst. Uh, There's something about singing together, praying together, listening and responding together that makes for a a sweet, sweet time of worship. It's It's something that God gifts us with. And then, amazingly, we're to be a gift to God in doing it, the activity of worship, the activity of coming together. And you know, everything we do is an extension of the ministry of Maranatha Baptist Church, right? Can I just tell you, if your high priority was not that souls would be saved, you would still have a great time of fellowship if you came out with us on Saturday morning. We're going to tell you that we start at 1015, but we're not telling you the truth. We usually have an early crew and a late crew. But I can tell you, you make... You talk about great fellowship with brothers and sisters out just sharing the gospel. Hey, can I just tell you that what we do on Monday nights that we've done for a decade, Bible Institute is a sweet time of fellowship. If it, was, if, if it weren't simply just to be getting into the Word, There's something about studying the Word of God together. There's something about the fellowship of of coming together in that. I'll tell you what we do. We, we, We laugh together. Sometimes we might laugh a little too much. I don't know. Hey, we cry together. What about Wednesday night? What do you think? Hey, how about Wednesday night? Some of you maybe aren't sure what a Wednesday night is, but I'm here to tell you you're missing out. Can I just tell you what goes on on a Wednesday night? I'll tell you what goes on. We pray for one another. We, we, we intercede for one another. Some of the sweetest testimonies you'll ever hear will be while people are sharing prayer requests. So number one, we need to worship God. All of what I'm talking about is worshiping God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Secondly, to experience forgiveness. Well, can't you just do that anywhere? Well, think about this. Worship also involves confession. We have an old-fashioned altar. We don't know what it's supposed to look like. This is ours right here. You can call it that. And that pew that you sit in right there, right where you stand or right where you sit. The Holy Spirit of God speaks through my heart and your heart while the Word of God is being preached. And we have opportunity. We have opportunity to respond. And I, and I, and I got to tell you, I'm, I am super thankful. We live stream right now. Believe it or not, there are people, it's Monday morning for them and they're watching your church service on the other side of the world. And we archive these services, all of them, good, bad, and everything in between. But I'm here to tell you, there's nothing like being here real time, right here. I, I believe there's something supernatural going on, that Holy Spirit moving in us, all of us, if we'll let him. And there's something precious, something precious about preaching for a decision and have any opportunity as each and every one of us listen and receive what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us about, and we respond. The greatest response of all, of course, the most important one, is when someone who doesn't know Christ recognizes their need for the Savior, and they make sure that it's settled right then and there. And guess what? That's going to happen here at Maranatha Baptist Church, isn't it? It's not going to be, it's going to be very hard for you to get out of here without somebody just 
taking a moment and saying hello and asking you that important question. If you didn't respond, even during the invitation. This is also for us who know the Lord. When we know the Holy Spirit has spoken to us in this meeting, during this preaching, and has pricked our heart, and we know we need to ask as we examine our own heart for forgiveness in areas of our life that we know have gotten us off center. So can I ask you a question? When do you think you ought to be here? Just on Sunday morning? Can we think of all the good things that can happen here and then ask this question again? When do you think you ought to be here? I mean, really. I mean, what can we be doing that's going to be more fruitful, going to be more important to do? I'll tell you what I am very careful about, and we all need to be about this. We're not about looking at the other guy and telling him what he ought to do. We're about examining our own heart. I know people are working through different schedules, and we have crazy lives and all kinds of things going on. And guess what? Sometimes we get sick and a little bit tired, and there are different things that happen. It's not my job to go running around. By the way, can I just tell you something? Look around. If there's 100 people or so and, and more and then extended families, the last thing I do is go snooping around looking for somebody to bug. I, I stay pretty busy just staying caught up with the number of people who call me and the number of people that I visit that you don't even know about. But I'm here to tell you that we come together as a church because we do need to hear the word of God and we do need to be, uh, corporately let the Holy Spirit work in us. Experiencing forgiveness is God's way, his plan. And this can happen outside of the church house. Of course it can. It can happen in your personal devotions, your family altar, your, your, your own study. It can actually even happen while you're watching something. So, number one, to worship. To worship God. Number two, to experience forgiveness. How about number three, to find Christian fellowship. Whoa, wait a minute. Is that right? I mean, should we actually do that on purpose? Yes. Yes. You know who your best friends ought to be? Brothers and sisters in the Lord. You have more in common with the crowd that you're sitting with right now than you will for the rest of the week. I would hope. And if you don't, that's why, another reason why you need to be here. It is not the job of the church to furnish fellowship. It's the mission of the church to be a fellowship. I used to think fellowship had something to do with food because we all have a fellowship hall. You ever notice that? And we, we do fellowship, but we do a lot more eating, amen? The ladies had a great fellowship yesterday. Did you eat anything? Yeah, I'm sure you did. We are made for each other. We, as brothers and sisters in the Lord, are to encourage one another. You know, some people ask, well, how do you figure out who you need to talk to and how do you visit? Can I tell you, a lot of the ministry goes on... Uh, when people are coming into church or when people are walking out of church. I mean, we're, we're a fellowship. Can I tell you there are lonely people, lonely people who know the Lord. What do I do every Sunday school for those who are here for Sunday school? I always encourage all of us to be a blessing, right? To look for somebody that you can shake hands with and you can be a blessing to. Some of you, you know who you are. You have a special affinity for our seniors and you minister to them. I, I, I have more of an affinity now that I'm one of them. <laughs> Anybody else? How about the 60 crowd? Let's give them all a big amen. Amen? Some of you, I know you're 60 and you're not even raising your hand right now, okay? <laughs> we must bear one another's burdens and pray for one another. How can we know? 
How can we really be a fellowship if we're not here when the doors are open? You know, can I just tell you, some people have said, look, I'm too busy, don't send me prayer requests. You know what I say? No problem, no problem. You know what I think? That's right. Who's praying for you? We are to love one another. I am so thankful for Maranatha Baptist Church. I have been in places where the tension was so thick you could cut it with a knife, where there were people at ought with one another, and it's a heartbreaker where... It's hard to go to church. Oh, all the right things are said during the service, but all the snide remarks and all the wrong spirits come out. They especially find themselves in a business meeting. I am so thankful for a... I'm I'm trying to be careful because I'm not just wanting to brag, but I'm going to say... I'm thankful for the leadership of Maranatha Baptist Church. I'm thankful for their spirit. I'm thankful that I don't have any big shots. I'm thankful that people just want to know Christ and make Christ known. I'm thankful for the man that I prayed with yesterday. You see, church, you know it. It's so important. We're to bear one another's burdens. We're to pray for one another. We are to love one another. A church is to be a warm, dynamic fellowship. That's what will make for a growing church. And by the way, I'm not talking about numerically. My greatest desire for us is to grow spiritually. And it's amazing how the Lord will work in that. I was thinking about what's been happening on Saturdays. We have an unbelievable crowd of people going out. And guess what? Just knocking on doors, inviting people to church and telling them about Jesus. As a matter of fact, in most cases, if you've got maybe 2% of your church doing anything like that, and in a lot of cases, I'll tell you how this works. Matter of fact, especially among independent Baptists, they think, okay, we hired this guy He's called the pastor, and we pay him. He can go tell somebody about Jesus. Well, I, I came up with another plan. I'm going to teach you how to do it too. And when you have, I'm telling you, at least 20% of your congregation that's out knocking on doors, God is doing something. Not bragging, no. Oh, the Lord, the, the very fact that he can use me or use you is, is amazing in and of itself. But what he does is he grows us. That's what causes your dynamic fellowship to happen. And I'm looking at this next list. And by the way, that's one announcement I forgot to mention. I'll do it right in the middle of the message. Uh, we're going to make sure that we have our materials But our next session of Operation Go begins next Saturday because your church is stepping up and doing what needs to be done. And by the way, that's even while the pastor is gone. There used to be a time when I was the guy who did all that. Now people are stepping up and getting it done. Hey, listen. We're to come together and be fellowshipping together. We're to find good Christian fellowship. Right now, right where you're at, right now, right where you're at, you're sitting beside somebody who has more in common with you than probably anybody else you'll be sitting beside or standing with the rest of the week. May I say that's also so true why three to thrive really is a good idea. Can I just say how sweet it is I'm talking to the crowd that knows this, to be back tonight. By the way, what's the title of the message tonight? Why people don't go to church. You don't want to miss that, right? 
By the way, you don't want to get your picture taken today and then tonight not be back, right? I, I'm, I'm just going to tell you something. This is kind of a preaching from the pastor's heart kind of a message. Pastor Ashley would tell you this, every one of us that have ever been behind a pulpit will say this. I know that Brother Larry knows this. We miss everybody who's not here. We wonder how they're doing. We check on them. Sometimes they're very good at going stealth on us. So we follow on social media. <laughs> Can I just say something? Let's not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And let's help others to see how important this is. By the way, we're looking for what? We're looking for the return of the Lord. Amen? I'm just thinking, wouldn't it be a good idea that if the Lord decided to come on Sunday morning at, at 11, 15, we go from here together? I just think that's a good idea. And so finally, may I say this? Why do people go to church? To be a part of God's great movement. Did you know you're part of a movement? Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 10, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. We enter to worship. We depart to serve. You've heard that great sign is posted on a lot of churches as you're walking out the door. You're entering the mission field. For a long time, we equated the work of the church with what happened inside the walls of the church. Now we realize that the church is not over when the congregation is dismissed. Aren't you glad we have a 24-7 God? Aren't you glad for that? I'm so glad. He watches my steps. He catches me when I fall. And he never slumbers. Never slumbers. In worship services, we witness the church gathered. Our minds are instructed, our hearts are inspired, our souls are, are fed, and our wills are motivated. Then, then, we go out into a world still as the church, but now as the church scattered. It's amazing that it was the scattering of the church that grew the church. It was persecution. So listen, we can get on social media and we can start whining and complaining about everything that's happening to us and what's wrong and how people don't like us no more. Or we can scatter and be the church outside the doors. And I'm just thinking that if we're going to do that, they're going to look and see who's pulling when the, where you're at on next Sunday morning when you're pulling out of your driveway. Both roles of the church are vital. The church is not a fortress where we gather in isolation to enjoy God and each other. Hey, just us four and no more. We don't care about what the world's doing. Neither is the church scattered activists without organization or roots or permanency. You know, there are a lot of issues. And I'm all about, you see, every time I go and vote, it's time for another selfie for pastor. I get my little I voted sticker. I, 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 I work for that. Ours are bilingual. It says it in Spanish and English, right? When you go to the voting booth, what are you supposed to do? Vote the Bible. Vote the Word of God. But are we going to... Do, do I think it's more important? Do, hey, listen, I, I am absolutely sickened that there are still... Thousands and thousands of babies that are murdered. I'm sickened about it. But you know, my highest calling and my greatest work will be to 
win people who mistakenly think that's okay to the Lord and let the Holy Spirit begin to work on them. We gotta be the church. We're not about being activists. We're about being activists for the Lord. And, and that also means, yes, be a good citizen, be a participant for sure, but there's still nothing more important than knowing Christ and making him known and being a light in a lost and dying world. So the real movement is what Jesus began. That's the movement that I want to be a part of. As we get ready to have an invitation, I want to say again, thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you for being here. And friend, thank you for coming with whoever might have invited you. And thank you for inviting someone. Brother Benny Mejia has like 2,500 uh, so, uh, Christian t-shirts. They're really neat. He doesn't even have to, when he goes witnessing, he just walks up and goes, read my shirt. <laughs> then he turns around and says, now read the back. One shirt says, each one reach one. How about that? How about that? Each one reach one. Remember what we talked about on Sunday night, a couple of nights, maybe probably last week? In your 60s, you'll start doing that much. We talked about addition and multiplication. Addition is, is when I get a chance to hear Delia tell me about Jesus and she leads me to the Lord. Multiplication is, is when she teaches me to do the same for someone else. And I get to lead somebody to the Lord. She becomes a a spiritual grandparent. Imagine what would happen when we decided that, you know what, we want to see people get saved. We want them to go to heaven. But we want to help them in the here and now. We want to get them right here where you know they're going to hear the preaching of the word of God. Hey, how many are confident that while the pastor's away, they're going to hear the preaching of the word of God by a tremendous associate pastor that we have here at Maranatha? And how many are thankful that when you send your kids to youth, you know they're going to hear the gospel? How many are thankful that when you go back to Monty's class, they're going to hear the word of God? How many are thankful for an Awana program where people are getting the job done? How many are thankful for the ministries that are taking place? I just think it's a good idea to be here. I think it's a good idea to encourage someone else to come. And I think it'll work a whole lot better when you lead the way with a smile on your face. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let's all stand. Our precious Lord and Heavenly Father, I think of all that went into making this Sunday morning so special. We had the air conditioning checked out this week. We had people come in and do an extra special job of getting the church ready and cleaned. Those who come and volunteer and help Miss Mrs. Miller, we we paid our bills, the lights are on, the air conditioning is running. We sacrificed and committed to there being less and less distractions. We think of how we're thankful for lighting and for a comfortable place to sit so that somebody's not thinking more about the board that's poking their back than the message that's being preached. We wanna do church right, but it's gonna happen when we're here. It's going to happen when we do this. Help us, Lord. Help us to then be the church who has been given marching orders and let us walk into this world 
reach out to this world, reach out to this mission field. And maybe for some of us, this just needed to be the reminder that we received, maybe so that we can be a blessing to our own family, be a testimony. Lord, help us to know this. The compromise of not attending, not being with God's people in order to appease someone else never, 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 never works. When family visits, bring them to church. Whenever you have opportunity, help them. And right now, Lord, let us continue to preach on, press on, and be the be the the church that you want us to be. Thank you again, Lord, for what you're doing at Maranatha. Thank you for the leadership of this church. Thank you for the sweet spirits, humble hearts. We, we weep together, we laugh together. And now we, in this invitation, allow you to have your way with us. Speak to hearts. Friend, if you don't know Jesus, get saved today. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.